Hi everyone, Brie here from Etched Actuarial, and in today's video I'm talking all about what an actuary is. Because I know a lot of you probably have heard of an actuary, but you're really not sure entirely what it is and what they do, and well, that's what this video is going to explain to you. So if you're thinking about becoming an actuary, give this video a thumbs up and let's get into it. So in the most general sense, an actuary is a professional that uses past data in order to quantify risk and put a value on events that we don't even know whether or not they're going to occur in the future, but an actuary has to put a value, a dollar value on those events. So I want to go through a really quick example to help you understand this a bit better. So let's say that someone walked up to you on the street and said, I'm going to give you $5,000 if you get in an accident within the next 10 years. I'll give you the $5,000 right when you get in the accident and you can use it to cover any expenses that you need to pay in order to get your vehicle fixed or any medical expenses that, be that come of the accident anything. I will just pay you $5,000. So if that happened to you, how much would you be willing to pay right now in order to get that kind of a benefit in the future? Well, this is the kind of problem that actuaries solve. So I'm guessing that most of you probably wouldn't be willing to pay $5,000 right now in order to get $5,000 in the future if you get in an accident because that just wouldn't make any logical sense. You don't even know if you're going to get the $5,000 in the future, so you probably wouldn't be willing to part with $5,000 right now in order to possibly get that back in the future. No one would do that. But how much would you be willing to pay? Maybe you'd be willing to pay $300 right now. Maybe that's worth it to you. If you think about it, this person that came up to you is kind of making a bet. They're saying that I really don't think you're going to get in an accident, so I'm willing to take $300 right now, and if you get in an accident in the future, I will pay you $5,000. Obviously, that person doesn't really think that you're going to get in an accident, and they are willing to bet on it. They're willing to pay $5,000 in the future and you only have to give them $300 for that right now. It's essentially a bet. And actuaries are working on these bets all the time, but they're trying to make sure that they are very fair. They're trying to make sure that the policyholder is paying a fair amount for the insurance that the insurance company is giving them. So if that 3000 or if that $300 that you are willing to pay has been mathematically all calculated out and determined that $300 is actually the fair value for that insurance, then you've essentially determined the premium that an actuary would calculate using tons and tons of data and math in order to come up with that $300. That's what an actuary does. So does it sound interesting to you yet? Because if it does, then you're going to love being an actuary because all this math and all the statistics that go into determining that fair value is what you'll be working on every single day. But if it doesn't sound very interesting to you, then you're probably going to want to move on because an actuary just isn't for you. That's what actuaries do. And you really have to think this work is interesting and the types of problems that you're solving are interesting in order to find the actuarial profession meaningful and interesting and to keep you going through all of the stuff that you have to go through in order to become one. So you might be wondering how an actuary actually comes up with this value. Now it's a pretty complicated calculation, but I'm going to go into it in a little bit of detail. So the first thing that an actuary needs to do is they need to collect tons and tons of data, like I already talked about. So they'll use all this data in order to determine exactly how far into the future they expect their policyholders to get in an accident, for example. I, I'm talking about auto insurance in this example, but there's all kinds of different insurance, like there's business insurance, there's life insurance, there's health insurance. So these exact same concepts can be applied to all those different areas, but I'm just going to talk about auto insurance for today. 
So actuaries will use all the data that they have to try to determine when they think their policyholders will get in accidents in the future. So to do that, they are basically using probability, and this is a big part of actuarial work. They have, they have to determine exactly the probability that someone will get in an accident next month and the probability that they'll get in an accident the following month and on and on and on. They'll, they'll have predictions for the probability of a policyholder getting into an accident every single month into the future. Another thing that actuaries have to take into consideration is interest. So. As a quick example, right now, if a friend was to loan you $1,000, you would not expect to have to pay them $1,000 back in 10 years from now because you've borrowed that money for so long, your friend is going to want it back pretty soon if you lend them or if they lend you $1,000. But your friend is probably going to be okay if you give them back $1,300 in the future because then they've earned $300 of interest. So interest is a really big part of actuarial work because when an insurance company takes money from policyholders from their premium payments, they're able to invest that money now and earn interest on it. So that's part of the reason why an actuary doesn't have to get $5,000 now for an insurance policy that will pay $5,000 in the event that someone gets in an accident. They're able to take the money that they get from a policyholder right now, they're able to invest it and make more money so that in the future when and if that policyholder gets in an accident, they'll have more money available than what the policyholder originally paid. So essentially an actuary will combine interest and probabilities all together in order to come up with a fair value for insurance and this bet that they're making. So if becoming an actuary sounds interesting to you, you probably want to know how to become an actuary. It's actually a pretty long process. First, you're going to have to go to school. A lot of actuarial, a lot of people getting into the actuarial profession go into what they call actuarial science. This is basically teaching you all the mathematics behind insurance and everything that an actuary would use in their day-to-day -day life and on exams, which I'll talk about later. But you might not want to go into actuarial science specifically because that really narrows down your focus. And if you decide later that you don't want to be an actuary, you'll be very limited in the career options that you have. So a better one would be to go into something like statistics or economics or anything related to finance. Now, while you're still in college or university, you should start writing actuarial exams. There are 10 actuarial exams that you need to pass in order to become a fully qualified actuary. Now, these exams are really hard and it takes quite a while to get through them all. It, it can take anywhere from five to seven or eight years for most people. Some people never even finish them and some people finish a little earlier, but it does take a long time because they are really hard. If you're interested in knowing more about those, just check out all the other videos on my channel because there are so many videos just about the actuarial exams and how they all work. Actually, I will link right above here to a video called How Actuarial Exams Work and that would be the perfect one for you to watch. Now, actuaries can start working in, as an actuary before they're actually done all their actuarial exams. So even though the process to become an actuary takes so long, you can actually start working in entry-level jobs before you're even done the exams because the 10 exams fully qualifies you and you don't have to be fully qualified in order to keep working. Another thing that you'd probably want to do is to get an actuarial internship or something related to the actuarial field while you are in the process of writing exams and maybe even while you're still in school. So now I just want to go into a little bit of detail about how hard it is to become an actuary because if you're considering the career, you're definitely going to want to know how difficult it is. And I don't want to make it sound easier than it is. The actuarial exams are hard. They take a lot of time and commitment. So before you even start writing them, you have to make sure that you are very committed to becoming an actuary. But if you're not really sure, 
what you could do is just try writing the first exam, exam P or FM. I will link above this video to how to decide which one to write first, but both of those are the easier exams of all of them and they're the ones that most people start with first. But yeah, if you're deciding right now whether or not you want to be an actuary, it'd be a really good thing just to try writing an exam and see if the amount of studying that you have to do can fit into your life for the next five, seven, or ten years, and if you're really willing to put that amount of effort in in order to become an actuary. You have to be really interested in the problem solving aspects and the career overall in order to keep up that motivation and dedication. The pass rate on the first two actuarial exams is somewhere between 40% and 50%. Okay, so I know I've given you a lot of information here, and I have a lot more to give you. Actually, I've written a whole blog post all about what an actuary is, and it goes into way more detail than I was able to go into in this video. So if you want to know more, go check out the description of this video. I've put a link there and you can just find out a ton more of actuarial information. And if you check out my blog, there are tons and tons of posts about being an actuary and just everything you could possibly want to know. So I hope this video helped you. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.